Hey, hey, guess what? Random scene, I'm now touching this girl's ass, no. Just be like, to Japan, first off, why? <laughs> We're like, having orgasms in. The true meaning of tits. We're all guys, and we don't necessarily dislike it. Like our strike should take over and fucking everything up. <laughs> I can bring it up as much as I want. I'm the host. Guess who sponsored the show? I really wish it was an anime! That's all. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. I'm your host CJ. Here with me is the usual cast. We've got uh, Roberto. Hey. We've got uh, Dan. It's two days today, CJ. I know it is. <laughs> We're finally doing this. Yes. I'm so pumped. <laughs> this is going to be great. Okay, and, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've also got Clecker. Hey, what's up? Alright, so um, yeah, like I said, this is the Pseudo Random Podcast. Uh, just so anybody who doesn't know has never heard it and everything, what we do here is we recommend anime and manga to each other, and we watch it and then talk about it like a book club, essentially. And uh, one thing that comes along with that, as usual, is there's a huge spoiler warning. There's going to be things we're going to spoil like crazy today, because we're going to be talking about um, Code Geass. Yes! The first uh, first season. Shut up, Dan. And uh, <laughs> we're also going to be talking about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, Volume 5, which is chapter... <laughs> Will you guys stop <laughs> fucking interrupting me? Jesus. We're like having <laughs> orgasms as CJ speaks. <laughs> uh, does somebody else want to host this? I mean, I'm, I'm trying right. to do my intro. Come Continue, on. Continue, CJ. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, uh, we're also going to be talking about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 5, which is chapters 30 through 35. And um, yeah, then after that, we're going to be talking about uh, any other anime and manga and stuff we've been reading or watching throughout the week. And... Uh, also, with that, we're going to be spoiling that stuff as well. Um, and unfortunately, with that, we're probably not going to say what we're about to spoil and everything. So be be wary of that. Um, then after that, we're going to be going to a random topic of the day, which uh, today is actually um, we're going to be talking about Echi and how it affects anime for you as you're watching it and everything. Like if it is a, a positive or negative effect to it or something. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with uh, Code Geass here. Since Dan's so fucking eager, let's go ahead and get him to give yeah. a quick little description of what it is. Right, so Code Geass happens in this somewhat futuristic world where the Empire of Britannia has been conquering all those other nations, including the place where the story goes on, which is Japan. After Britannia conquered Japan, they renamed the place Area 11, and Clovis Re Britannia, which is the third prince of the empire, has been taking uh, care of the country, ruling the, the country, and using a lot of violence controlling the, the Japanese rebellion. Our main, our main character is Lelouch, who is actually an exiled Britannian prince, as you'll find out through the story, who poses as a student and ends up in the first episode acquiring this superpower called Gius after he meets this mysterious girl called, uh, called uh, CC or Sichu. With that skill, he can essentially command anybody to do whatever he wants, but there are a few limitations. He needs to be making eye contact with them, and he can only give each person a single order. With this power, he joins the Japanese resistance as a masculine leader called Zero, forms the Black Knights, and plans to destroy the Britannian Empire in order to make a better world for his sister, Nunnally, who lost her legs, uh, lost the movement of her legs and is blind. On the other side, we also see the Britannians trying to deal with all this, uh, especially in the beginning Clovis, but soon uh, Cornelia, as you guys met already, a few other uh, princes and princesses later on, and also Suzako, who is Lelouch's best friend, who happens to Japanese, but fights for Britannia because he believes he can change the country from the inside. I guess that's about it. Yeah, I would that's say it. so, Dad. Yeah, I had a few notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked like you were reading something off there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I still made up, like, half of it, but I just had, like, a yeah. little, like, things. Prepared. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I want to say starting off, I fucking hate the main character. <laughs> and that's not, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not saying this just to screw with Dan or anything. I just legitimately don't like anything about him. The, the only, like, somewhat redeeming quality he has is the fact that he cares about his sister as much as he does. Yeah. Other than that, he's just a pompous, arrogant douche, pretty much, as far Sick. as, like, a person goes. That kind of sums it up pretty well. Yeah, this yeah. like essentially the way this anime. Edgy. Yeah, essentially the way this anime felt for me is like, let's say you took like Death Note and made a mecha version of it. Yeah, pretty That's much. That's kind of how it feels to me because of the main character. It, it Only... goes to a, f a few different directions after a while, but I can see where where you see that definitely. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to say like I. I enjoy Lelouch as a character. Uh, I just I like to see what he does next and everything. And I also uh, appreciate seeing his descent into madness, kind of thing, as you go through the show. Um, he he's never like completely evil or whatever. At least on those twelve episodes, he as you can see, he goes back and forth into trying to do things for the the country's uh, goodness or like just making something better for like a better word for his sister. Uh, but at the end of the day, it feels like all he cares about is just like power, like just gaining more power and and trying to avenge um, avenge him and his sister because of his past. So. Yeah, um, that that's kind of one of the reasons why I I can't stand him is because he he doesn't to me seem like he's actually trying to uh, make the country a better place. Kind of, it seems like he's definitely more out for just flat out revenge, and because of that, he wants to like destroy Britannia and everything. And somehow, because of that, he he ends up actually doing things that are good sometimes, like actually saving yeah. people and things like that. But that's just a pure coincidence that it's good. He doesn't give a fuck. I've seen him literally like cause tons of people to die, both on his side and the other side, and he shows no remorse. Like yep. one thing I'm I'm super curious about right now, because this is actually happened at the very end of episode yeah. twelve here, is because of his last escapades and everything, he called uh, or he caused uh, fuck what was her name Shirley? Yes. Yeah, he caused Shirley's dad to die. And because they didn't really show anything from him, I'm actually very curious to see if he even shows remorse for that. Like, I kind of doubt that he will with how he's been. And, like, that's just the impression I have of him, that he's just, he he's definitely, like, a high-functioning sociopath that just doesn't give a shit about people. The, the only thing he cares about is his sister and making the world what he thinks it should be, whether that's good or not. Yeah. Uh, and... It's, it's very focused on, he's very focused on achieving his goals no matter what, so. Yeah. And he he just doesn't give a shit if his goals are good or not, and he doesn't give a shit how he's gonna do it. He he's he's had he, like the Black Knights and everything. He says they're knights for justice and everything, but that is really all just a publicity stunt, from what I can tell. Where he just wants them to be like s seen as the the justice for like the Japanese, as well as he even said like the the Britannians that don't have the ability to fight for themselves. But that's all just bullshit, because he just wants enough people to follow him to the point where he can do whatever the hell he wants. And he's just a fucking dick like that. I mean, I, I hate him because of that, and how he's he's willing right. to do whatever it takes to get what he wants. I mean, there, there, there are all those different characters that we get to meet on the Japanese side that they're actually fighting for, for essentially their lives and yeah. improving their lives. You see, you know, uh, I think it's, it's Colin, or I don't know how you... Yeah. Pronounce that, but yeah, Colin. Colin. Yeah, yeah uh, there's short right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Ogi is the name of like the the previous like commander uh, yeah. and of of those of that group and everything. And Lelouch, it seems like he's just playing using them. You know, like he just yeah. gets in there and he just starts using that manpower to uh, to help him achieve his own goals. I'm curious to see what if Clacker has like something to talk about this since he's also watching this for the first time. So, I kind of. I, I can see where Lelouch... I don't know. Lelouch... I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about Lelouch. I can see where CJ's coming from, where he's a dick, because he is a dick. Just most of the stuff he's done, I can't completely agree with. But at the same time, I can understand doing a lot for a single person if you care about him a lot. So I'm still, I'm still trying, I'm still at a debate between myself whether or not I can accept Lelouch as a good character or not. See, um, this, this kind of gets into something I've been thinking with him a little bit anyway, is the fact that even though he says that, yeah, he's trying to do it to better the world for his sister and everything, it, it almost seems like he's lying to himself about that now, just to giving him motivation for that, where he's just like... I'm just gonna fuck up this whole empire because I feel like it, and it'll make things better for my sister, yeah. Right. Like, he just... Uh, it, it seems like he's really just motiv motivated by straight revenge, and he's just trying to give himself a reason to fight for that. Like, I I can't see anything with him giving him, like, an actual valid reason to do the shit that he does. Even if it is to, like, make the world better for his sister or whatever, he's fucking shit up a pretty bad a few times and everything he's literally getting tons of people killed that literally just want to like live free and like live in japan right. again and not 11 yeah and... um he's still somewhat of a badass though like that's the cool part of the show where like he 
like putting his personality aside, like his battle strategy is what the show like focuses on a lot of times. Or not not just battle strategy, yeah. but just like the things that he does and the the people he tries to manipulate to do everything. Because the Gear seems like something very overpowered in the beginning when you think about it. Like he can just give anybody any order and they'll follow it. But at the moment that he can only use that once for each person, that adds like another layer where he he really needs to use it well. And not waste it with something stupid. Like in the very beginning, he actually wastes his, uh, the the one time he could use it with Colin, who ends up being one of the main uh, characters in the show. Mm -hmm. um, just just like asking something stupid, like why why were you doing that or whatever. And then he realizes that he can't use uh, a second time. And it's also cool, like in the beginning of the show, where this is like testing different things to just um, see how how far his power can go. And uh, let me see. I, I want to see what you guys think about the the people who oppose him, though, because Clavis got taken out way in the beginning of the show, so he he's gone on the first like three episodes or whatever. He's the first person that he, he kills, like he shoots yeah. him in the head. But then Cornelia comes in and she wants to avenge him, so she she also comes up not as much of a, a villain as more of like she has her ghost shoe. Like she's not necessarily that different from Lelouch himself. Why do you guys think about that? Like or her her personality in general. I'm gonna let one of you guys go ahead if you want. I've, I'm probably gonna talk at length about that sure. in a minute, so you guys go sure. ahead. Sure. Well, she's probably my favorite character in the show. I mean, I could talk more about her, but you guys haven't gotten that far yet. Right. Cece is by far my favorite so far. Oh yeah. She, she, don't, she don't take I've... shit from anyone. Yeah, I really like Cece a lot. <laughs> and uh, just something interesting about all the time. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I think something interesting about Cornelia. I think she's actually a reference to Final Fantasy. Because her her mech is called Garland, and in the first Final Fantasy game, Garland kidnaps the princess of the kingdom Cornelia, and that's your goal to save her within the beginning. Yeah, that's right. So, I think you told me that. I, I didn't even it, use to, to know that, but yeah, just something interesting. I don't know if it's for sure, but it's it all the all of it seems logical. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about Cornelia, um, Clucker? I don't have much on Cornelia. Um, I still let's see. So, Cornelia, which, remind me again, which one was Cornelia? Cornelia was... She's the older sister. Yeah. And Euphemia ah. is the younger sister. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, she essentially took over after Clovis died. She took over Area 11, and then she's yeah. the one that starts fighting Lelouch a few times. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I remember now. So, I like the fact, um, I like the fact that there's similarities between her and Lelouch, um, she has her own goals, and the first guy that Lelouch, like, I guess, took on, he kind of just, was just, like, a beginner guy, and just kind of washed him away. There really wasn't, there really wasn't any character development there, I felt like. Yeah. But with her, there was a lot more there. There were, like, I, she actually had her own goals, and she wanted to pursue them, but at the same time, she still wanted revenge on Lelouch for, you know, killing. So... She's and she's also very protectful of her sister. Just yeah, yeah. Um, she's interesting. Um, I liked some of the interactions between her and Lelouch because she like just wasn't gone in three episodes. She actually like Lelouch like actually had to do some pretty interesting things to get rid of her. Um, and that's about it, I think. Yeah, I think it's the first time where he's like when he's battling her for the first time where he's like, "Shit, I may have lost this one," which is when like she she realizes that someone may be uh, on one of their mechs, and then she asks everybody to come out of their mechs and present their ideas or whatever. So it's like, "Oh shit, I'm fucked," and that's when CC shows up wearing his uh, zero. Uh, like wearing the zero mask and suit and everything, and she distracts everybody so that he mm -hmm. can run away. So, and that's, that's why I she... love Cece. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love Cece because she didn't take shit from Lelouch. Like one of the first times they actually really talk after she comes back and everything. Right. He's asking her all these questions. She's like, "Quit being so stubborn. I'm going to sleep." <laughs> and she's just fucking gone. <laughs> like she's just like, "Yeah, you could fuck off. I'm gonna eat some pizza now." Okay. Like she just doesn't give give any shits and. She's the only one that can really just, like, make Lelouch shut up and, like, do what she wants, and it's fucking great. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Anyway, back to, uh, Cornelia, though. Um, the way I felt about her, I, I like her much more as a character than Lelouch, because she 
at least to me, seems like she she has some form of honor and actually will stick by that and everything. She actually has a moral code and she isn't just a fucking sociopath. It just doesn't give a shit. I mean, yeah, she'll she'll have problems where she'll actually not not necessarily like purposefully, uh, but she she has like sacrificed some of her soldiers and everything, like fighting these battles and stuff that were like crazy, but. When it came down to it at one point, whenever she pretty much just flat out lost, she's like, no, I'm not surrendering. I'm going to fucking fight to my last breath. Let's fucking do this. Yeah. And she she at least has the honor and everything and the pride to be able to, like, do something like that. Where Lelouch is all just like, I don't know. He just wants to do whatever the hell he needs to to make his shit happen and keep him alive. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, can, I, I respect her a hell of a lot more than I do him. She is willing to fight with her own bare hands if needed. You know, like, yeah. if, if things aren't going well, she will get on, like, her mech and, and get in there and just get the job done. Which yeah. is something that uh, Lelouch doesn't usually show as well. He just prefers to, like, stay in the back safe and just yeah. let everybody else yeah. Oh, yeah, she's on the fucking front lines every yeah. time. She's like, I'm gonna go fuck this dude up. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Him? Yeah. No, he's gotta have people around him. He's gotta have somebody, essentially, as a bodyguard to fucking protect him and everything. He, he uh... I don't know, like I said, he, he just lacks the honor, like... Sure. She she is very similar to him, where she'll do a lot of the same type of stuff he will. And overall, she like I said, she she's overall just a very similar character to him and everything. But that just that one little extra aspect in there, giving her that honor, just changes her drastically. Where it's like, even though yeah, she can even if she does the same type of stuff as him, it's more reasonable and acceptable at that point, I guess. Yeah, no, I I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to figure out how the hell to actually say it properly, really. So she. Two lovebirds that we have not mentioned yet, but they're also like important uh, parts on, on Lelouch's ch- uh, chess game or whatever, are the third princess, which is Cornelia's little sister, Euphemia, Fibritania, and Suzaku, who is Lelouch's best friend, who is Japanese, but ends up fighting for Britannia, which is kind of ironic, thinking that like Lelouch is Britannia and fights for Japan. Not really, but kind of. Um, not even so, kind of no. Yeah. <laughs> no i mean he pretends to you that's the thing like but he doesn't he, though like there, there's a big distinction between pretending to and actually fighting for a side he fights for himself okay. that's all yeah he's using the the japanese liberation front or whatever the hell they're, they're called right just so that way he can destroy britannia and everything like he probably doesn't even know what the hell he's gonna do if he does destroy him he's gonna be like well uh i guess that's done now you might find out <laughs> on the second season <laughs> well, or fucking not. maybe i don't know yeah yeah, but, we'll um, so Suzaku, what do you guys think about Suzaku? He's an incredibly generic character. Really? Okay. He's just boring to me. So I, far. I, he's, he's, an, he's necessary in the show and everything, and I understand why he's there, and he's, he, he's good for what he is, but his character itself is just okay. incredibly generic. He, he's mostly the counterpoint to Lelouch, where Lelouch is kind of like the, the, the black anti-hero or whatever. Uh, Suzaku is more of like a white knight, or just like being very, um... Very honorable and and not wanting to kill like any innocent people. And the first time they fight in the very like first or second episode or whatever, uh, there is a woman that falls from a building, and then he goes and like saves her with a mech. It's kind of like a weird scene, but he he's that kind of like very honorable fighter who is willing, probably willing to like sacrifice his life just for the greater good, which is like the opposite of Lelouch essentially. And it's funny to think that they're like best friends, and at the same time they're like the the. There is each other's yeah. nemesis, but I will say this, CJ. I understand what you're like, why you you're not interested on him. But there's more to him than what you've seen so far. And not to say yeah. that it's not necessarily going to change your mind, but just like there's a little more in yeah. there that you get to find out with time. So yeah, I mean they've they've at least hinted at some of his stuff with his past and things like that and what have you and all that. But um, I don't know. Even from what they've hinted at and what they've shown, even like the tragic past stuff they've tried to show a little bit of, it's like okay, that's that's pretty generic too. He's okay. It, it's like somebody just just pulled like an extremely generic character archetype and just put a name on it for him and like gave him a. Well, hell, they didn't really do anything as far as his looks. He looks incredibly generic too. He actually, I think he actually looks exactly like a character from Sakura Card Captor or something like that. Oh, he looks Clamp like a the... bunch of different characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Clamp did do the character designs for this show. Yeah. Oh, oh and okay. one thing. That explain some stuff i just want to say one thing i hate about the character design is everyone is way too tall and lanky <laughs> that's clamp they look yeah, that's clamp fucking for you. weird 
Yep. That, that's just the company I saw. I thought that was weird as fuck as well. I just yeah. end up, ended up getting used to it. But yeah. yeah, everybody's like super skinny and everything. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it kind of it's kind of leaning more towards the shoujo kind of art style. Yeah. But not but it's still kind of like a shonen kind of show. Yeah, it, it's just a weird mashup. Like it, it seemed like they couldn't figure out what the hell they wanted to do with the character design and it just looks weird. That's because they like what company did the general like art of the anime and then they hired another company just to do the character designs and then the character designs are completely in the style of the company they hired which is clamp which is the same co- company that does uh sakura card capture and a few well, other shows well what i, I mean is company, the but... well, what i mean is the actual character designs it seemed like they couldn't figure out what the hell they wanted to do for that right like, i'm it's... just saying that's because it was outsourced kind of yeah. thing that could that could kind of uh, but i yeah. i don't really know what went down with that decision and like these people write know. the story and then we're gonna hire this group of manga artists to do the character designs <laughs> The character designs would have actually worked a hell of a lot better in manga. Probably. It, it, it would have fit a lot better. I, guess I mean, that's just... what they do. <laughs> hmm? I mean, that's what Clamp does. They're, they're yeah. a bunch of manga artists. Yeah. Right. Um, also, something that's kind of random, but I I, 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 was, I was looking through the, the episode list now, and I just I remember. There's like this very random episode in the middle of this part where it's just... It's almost like a generic uh, school anime where the whole episode, they're looking for the mask... Like, because oh, yeah. there's a cat that picks up Lelouch's mask. Oh, and then yeah, the whole episode, episode is then just, like, running around the school or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, some of the stuff like that kind of kind of detracts from the anime even more for me, because there there's no reason for something like that in this show. It, it just it just pulls it farther away. I mean, I can, I can even see a little bit of the romance elements they have in there. Those are right. fine. They haven't overdone those yet. But, like, having an almost an entire episode where it's, like, supposed to be super funny, him running around with the fucking, the cat running around with the helmet and everything, I was just like, why is this here? It's pretty much like, just a very stupid, like, wasted episode. And I, yeah. I, I'll, at least what I can tell you is that it doesn't happen often. Like, I think that's the one time that it happens on the first season. And then they, there's a similar thing on the second season. They shouldn't be doing anything like that in this. Like, okay, a little little quip here or there for, like, a little comedic relief, a little little pun or right. something like that. Whatever, that's fine, but... Is a full episode? <laughs> no, not a full episode. Not even a, a full scene. I mean, oh, if it's right. a short scene, maybe. But, like, and even some of the running gags are fine, like how um, the cat keeps biting the fucking guy and everything. That's kind of funny. That's the type of thing you should have oh, in this yeah, if right. you do want to have comedic relief, but... Everything else is just like I don't know. It it doesn't fit. It 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 takes you out of the focus of it too much. Like the the only one I'll, I'll kind of excuse for that is whenever uh what the hell's a childhood friend's name? Suzaku. Yeah, Suzaku. Whenever he actually meets um, the, yeah, when he actually meets her and he's running around with her and it's like a date type of thing and all that. That e- even just the tone of that was different, where it still fit in the anime and it had yeah. a legitimate reason because she was ended up being one of the princesses of the fucking empire and everything. And it's like, okay, cool. So that was like an introduction to her character and showing how nice she is and everything, and how she just she cares about both the Britannians and the the Japanese and yeah. everything. Like that was very good and it it seemed weird at first, but it actually fit incredibly well because of that. The fucking cat running around and all that bullshit? No, that's fucking stupid. You should not have done that. Like, there, <laughs> there was no reason for that. Oh, I agree. I, I, I totally Another thing there's no because... fucking reason for is all the goddamn Pizza Hut ads. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> guess what's... Guess who sponsored the show? Yeah. Yeah. If, okay, if, if they actually fit into the scenes better, it'd be fine. But the problem is, every time I see those... They are so it's it's they they drew the scene before they put that there and because of that I guess they fucking went crazy and they put so much more contrast and like pop to the color and like it, it almost looks like it's even a higher resolution and everything than the rest of it so it it just stands out way too much. I agree, it's kind of out of place, but I didn't mind. I thought it was funny like every time every time they did it. Every um, time I see it, it distracts me from it and it makes me angry, <laughs> which is kind of ironic because I actually had uh, pizza today, but like. I don't know. It it detracts from the anime for me. It's probably working then, because like you remembered. Pizza well, no, I, I, I get pizza. <laughs> no, I get pizza about once a week anyway. Okay. It's just various places, and pizza is on the way home, so I just stopped there today because I didn't have time to really do anything else. Right. And um, yeah, I don't know. There, the the biggest problem I have with this anime right now is because of things like that and the the cat episode and like all these other things detract from the story in the anime and they break it up way too much 
I mean, I understand there's like the peaks and valleys and everything, the climax curve and all that stuff to make stuff actually work better, but they they way overdid it with breaking it up. It's like they pulled it out and made it a completely different anime for an episode at a time or even like half an episode or what have you, and it's like it doesn't work with this type of anime. Like, f- there most type of anime can't even really pull it off anyway. One of the few I actually know of is uh, the Monogatari series because they they pull everything together so well with that and everything. Like, it, it flows a lot better, and it's established from the beginning of that anime that there's, it's essentially a conglomeration of a bunch of different genres. This one starts off several episodes, incredible drama and shit, and, like, battle tactics and all this stuff, and, oh, there's a cat running around with the helmet, everybody go chase it, right. like, the whole school go after it now. It's like, the fuck is this? Yeah, I almost feel like they wanted to, <sighs> to just take, like, a chill break or something but they kind of didn't know how to do it properly and i agree it's like it's it's just one of the cons i guess yeah um who did I, oh yeah uh one character that i find pretty interesting although he's like he's, he's a very much of a side uh side turd whatever character uh jeremiah gutward or something like that i like uh, him he's cool it, i think i think he's a very uh interesting character who sometimes works as a comedy relief as well just because like he just wants to fight for his country, but he ends up like always being in the middle of like Lelouch's plans in a in a weird way. Yeah, he just gets screwed over and stuff. I I am curious what the hell happens to him, though, because we haven't seen him since um, he used that one fucking like heat cannon thing on his mech, and he you, you see him like later that episode or whatever, and he's stumbling around, bleeding out of his eyes and nose and everything. It's like what the fuck. Yeah, so. that that character sticks around for a while, and, and his is his pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I also really like the guy who made Lancelot. The oh, he's like, funny as hell. He he's the type of comedic relief this anime should have. He's funny as fuck, and it, but he fits because he's just a super eccentric scientist. He's great, yeah. <laughs> and I love how like he he pretty much only cares about his his mech, like yeah. the mech that he's building. He doesn't really give a shit about anything else. Like the Britannia yeah. wins, the Japan wins, whatever. As long as his mech's fine, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, but I think that's about it. Like that, I uh, I had to mention and and ask for this first half. There's a lot more coming on the on the second one, but just like I would like to hear more, like uh, just final thoughts if like of the like just general like do you, do you like it so far? Do you not like it or? Because Clacker hasn't said much yet as well. So I'm gonna hold my opinion until I see all of season two. Um, currently at the moment, I would put it. I'd probably rate it probably around seven or eight. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I'd, I'd probably give it about a five right now. <laughs> that's that's not it... joking either. That's that's okay. straight up how I feel about it. Seven or eight. I'm leaning more towards seven. Um, but we will see what happens. Um, either the second season will do a very good job, and my opinion of it will rise. Also, just to clarify, we're still like on the first season. We're going to see like the second yeah. half of the first season because the second season is something else. Okay. Yeah, that's a whole another 25 episodes. Yeah. yeah. Like, one thing I'll say, about the only thing that would probably bring it up enough for me to give it more than, like, a 5 out of 10 is if it gets to the point where I actually have, like, some form of reason to add all, like, Lelouch. Because otherwise, like, it's... it's I, I, I dislike him to the point where it almost ruins every scene that he's in. Like, it's that bad. The only reason he didn't yeah. have, like, a 5 out of 10 is just because of the drama and the story is well put together. Okay, like I, I never thought he was a good guy, but I still enjoy like watching him as a bad guy, like doing not necessarily as a bad guy, but it's kind of like that anti-hero with a, a very shady uh, personality and intentions. I still just enjoyed watching what he did. I don't yeah. necessarily need to like really like the character to like everything that's going on, but See, you I... may hate him even more on the on the second half. I'm gonna spoil yeah, it, I, but... I'll put it this way: I don't like him as a character or person. Like, oh, okay. He, I, I would have been much happier if, like, his best friend or something was the main character. If it just followed everything from his point of view or something instead, I would have liked the anime. It'd probably be a solid eight or seven or eight by now. But the fact that how much it follows Lelouch and everything, it just, I don't know. It it does not work for me. Okay, that, that works. That's that's pretty much all I have, though. You guys got anything else? Oh, no. Yeah. I'm good. All right, cool. Um, so I guess we're moving on to Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, then, uh... So, I guess we're going to start with your big-ass list of questions, then, Clicker. Uh, actually, I'm going to let you guys steer this one a little bit. So, what did you guys think of the last chapter? Or actually, inform me what happened in the last chapter, first of all. Uh, uh, I believe they beat the uh, Eight Eyes, right? Yeah. 
seven or eight? Eight. Both. Eight. Okay. Both. In, in, yeah. in, in those last, like, five chapters or whatever, they beat both. And also we saw the horse knight become the unicorn knight, which is supposedly one of the <laughs> the mystical beasts or whatever. Uh, yep. I, I, yep, yep. When, when that scary. happened, I just... I just love to think that, like, I had not thought of that. <laughs> just being like, oh, my God, of course, that was obvious. Like, the Yeah, they were talking about the unicorn, unicorn and... night earlier and everything. And I just, yeah. it's like, oh, I okay. should have seen that. Be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. We also saw the the a- anime. Anima is how it's called. Like, the actual the princess. Yeah, anima. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. And she, she hasn't really done much yet besides making the horse night, the unicorn night, and eating a lot. I, I do like her as a character so far, though, because she's okay. just glad, like... I'm glad to hear you say that, CJ. Because she's just like, give me more food. It's like, yeah. oh, you, you want an answer? Give me seconds. Okay, then yes, I did this for that. Whatever, shut up. Right. <laughs> she's like, I don't know, it's it's just somewhat of the, the disregard for everyone else, and just like, I, I'm going to do what I want now. Only she does it in a funny way, which is good. So I, yeah, I've some, somehow her. that actually fits with uh, the actual princess character, whose name I always forget as well, but the one we had seen before. Everyone just, just calls her princess. Just call her the princess, it's easy. Because <laughs> yeah. both are princesses now, right? I guess, so I don't know. Um, I don't know, is Anima like the queen or something? I don't really know. Anima is... Um, I, I Actually, I can't tell you because you'll find out. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I know she's apparently a twin with Animus and everything now, but that's, yep. that's that about is, all we know. That is true. So. There's, also, there's, there's a little bit more to it. On, on this volume, we also got like two to three chapters dedicated to the princess family. Yeah, that was um, cool. Yeah. You get to meet her mom and all that. And yeah. Then... Yep, and you got to see the relationship between her and her mom. What do you guys think of that? Well, there wasn't much. Like, they barely talked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was nice to see the resolution of it and everything towards the yeah. end of that uh, that volume. And um, I don't know, it, it ended up being like the classic thing of, hey, they're gone and everything. I don't think they care about me, so I'm not going to talk to them because I don't want them yeah. to confirm that they don't care about me and all that. So it's true. It was it was nice seeing that resolved there towards the end. The whole sequence was kind of a nice uh, change of pace to the to the manga as well. But overall, I wasn't crazy about it. I don't think like anything major uh, happened in that part, but. Also, I... they, just, just giving one uh, extra detail, I just remembered that the in the beginning of this volume they beat the Seven Eyed Golan without uh, the Lizard Knight and the Princess because they're taken out, and then the other yeah. guys have to fight on their own and they beat it, and then the I think they beat uh, the Eight uh, Eyed all together at the end. So, well, they didn't have the Princess there. Oh yeah, that's right. The she was too weak was and everything. Sick. Yeah, the Princess was sick because and like. And Miss was like, I'm all start taking over your body a little bit. I also love how the, the fat dude, uh, the, the the cat knight, is starting to create golems. Yeah, yes. he's actually pretty cool. He's, he's, he's making them pretty cool, too. And he's yeah. he's making them, it's cool because he makes them for, like, purposes of training and sparring and everything, as well as actually fighting. Yeah. So, so, that was cool. I feel like I might have missed, like, the explanation for that, or there wasn't one. Because I thought that was kind of weird, how, like, randomly they just showed him, like, making golems. Yeah. But, anyway. Sorry, Clicker. You're, you've been meaning to talk for a while. <laughs> um, the cat guy is actually, uh, I f- and you can correct me if I'm wrong, though, Roberto, but the cat guy is, uh, Roberto's favorite. Mm, knight. No. Really? I thought, no. I thought he was your favorite knight. Of the group. Wait, no, you're right. That's right. That's been a while. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's um, cool. I can see how he'll probably end up being one of my favorites as well. Yeah, he's, he's uh, really yeah, cool he's, guy. He's a good character. He, you will probably like what happens with him. Um, so, one thing I want to mention is I really like when they fought the Seven Star Golem how much of a team they had to be in order to beat him. Like, they all had to kind of, like, unite to try and take on this thing, because if one of them was out of order, it kind of would have just fucked everyone. Right. I, so, I really like the, uh, I've really started liking the cook, the guy who cooks, all right, uh, or, uh, as well. The mouse because, guy? Uh, yes, that guy. Because he just developed, like, his initial, uh, his new skill or whatever, where he, he, he throws alcohol on fire or something. And then I love how, like, his, his best friend or whatever the girl uh the who is the pre- apprentice ma- 
praying mantis night i'm sorry this is this is this is kind of challenging for me tonight <laughs> sorry the she, english is she, so difficult yeah she does the opposite <laughs> where she freezes water and throws at people so i thought that was kind of funny because it seemed almost like he's like oh look at this cool thing i can do she's like oh i can do something cool too ah. <laughs> yeah. it's like god damn it bitch you just stole my thunder yeah. like it's fucking great <laughs> love it yeah so hmm, do i got anything else for you guys um how have you guys liked the developing of all the characters so far? Do you think it's doing really? Do you think it's doing the job well? Like, have you been able to kind of accept almost all of them as knights, and have yeah. you been able to relate to them in any shape, way, or form? I was afraid I would get lost first, but I've been finding myself remembering uh, pretty much everyone at this point because they they're doing a good job of giving like certain uh, specific characteristics to to each one of them and everything. Mm. So. Yeah, they they've done a good job with the uh, the character development, and everything from what I've seen, and it, it's it's overall been pretty enjoyable. I've liked, uh, yeah, pretty much like for the most part, like all the all the different characters and everything, and they they all add to it. They don't really detract from anything. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. Um, the Crow Knight. What do you think of him, CJ? Because I know when you originally saw him, you didn't know what you, you you didn't know how you liked him. Has your opinion changed of him? I hate him. Just. I, I still don't know enough about him yet. Okay. He's still very mysterious and everything as far as, like, where we're at. Okay. He, he, I don't know, like, to me he seems very stupid. Like, it doesn't seem like he actually cares about the whole purpose of the mission. He just wants to fight people. And and when he had the opportunity to actually fight the Seven-Eyed Golem, he kind of ran away because he went after the, the wizard with uh, the Lizard Knight and the Princess. So I don't know. I don't like. I I don't really like him so far. But we'll see where where that goes. So you don't like him because he has his own agenda and doesn't really care about how others feel. Because you shut up. I know. I things. know where you're going. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> see, the difference Beautiful. is that like Lelouch is actually moving the whole story along to get his shit done, but this guy is just like randomly doing his own thing. Where like I don't know. Yeah, like, but this the whole thing is story is over here, and he's just like over there fighting someone else just because he wants you. Like, See, that's, that's the whole point I made earlier, though, that I think Code Geass would have been better if it focused on his childhood friend as a main character, and he was one of the side characters. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I I like Code Geass a lot the way it is, but... Uh, well, yes, Dan, I know. <laughs> like, I, I like to follow Lelouch's story and, and wonder what he's going to do next. But we're not on the second in- anymore, CJ. Leave that for next week. Or... I can bring it up as much as I want. Okay. I'm the host. You're the host. You do whatever you want. Pretty much. <laughs> See, so you want to just talk about whatever you want in the show, and you don't give a fuck about anybody else. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So you're like Lelouch as well. <laughs> Probably, yeah. right? Except I'm not a sociopath, and I'm not I'm just gonna screw everybody over I, if I want to and everything. I did, I did just throw something up in the Skype a picture though. That that fucking face was like amazing. Remember I saw that? I was like, oh my god, yes, so happy. It's um. It's a picture of the princess and everything whenever... Uh, let me pull up the exact scene. But um, whenever she's, like, super scared about returning to her mom and all that, and he literally oh. is just like, um, like, yeah. uh, don't be scared, I'll come with you and everything. And her face is just, like, she fucking adorable. She blushes and everything, yeah. I was yeah. like, that's... Yes! Come here! <laughs> yeah. I wanna hug you. Then they're, just... they, they end up walking back, like, holding hands and everything. She's fucking, like, embarrassed the whole time. It's great. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm still quite curious to see the wizard's true intentions because I feel like there's more to it than just destroying the earth. But... There might be, Dan. There just might be. I don't um... know if there will be. Like he's even said multiple times, both him and like uh, a few other people have said that it's just a game and everything. And it's like maybe it is just a game. Maybe it's some, or yeah. maybe it ended up being something like um, Mariah Nikki and everything. Even though it's a game, it has a deeper meaning or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting. And not necessarily, like, I, I want or need that, because I think it will even be somewhat cliche, but it's kind of what I can see coming from this, where he's like, yeah. oh, the only reason why I did all of this is that because I wanted you guys to come together for a come and go and learn to work as a team or whatever, and just something stupid as okay, that. Okay, is this going to turn into Samurai Flamenco? Is going to turn him into <laughs> Flamenders uh, no. and everything? No. I, I'm telling you right now, no. <laughs> I know. I, nothing can be Samurai Flamenco. I, I, no. No. Uh, no, there will nothing. be a, there will be an anime yeah. called Samurai Flamenco Two. There will. Has it been confirmed and greenlit? 
No. no. <laughs> okay. Does, does it really need to be one? Like, how, how, where the fuck do you go with that? Right? You've already played all your cards and everything. Like, your, your trump card's gone, which is the shock of just, oh, shit, shit's going wrong now. Okay, there's, like, he, he pretty much talked to it. And it did, did he actually fight the universe? I don't remember. No, he, no, he, he just, just talked, talked to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it, it how, really do you, how do you go up from there? How do you how do you continue that? You can't. I, have no. I don't think you can. Then yeah, there won't be a season two then, because <laughs> Only... the, the the whole anime was it was just escalation the anime, and if you hit yeah. the top, you can't go any farther than that. <laughs> Only if they came up with like parallel universes or something like that, or like the theory that. Yeah. If any, anything could happen in a different universe or something, and then he goes to a different universe where he doesn't have his powers or whatever. I, at I don't want to think about would, that, honestly. At, at, at that point, <laughs> they'd probably end up doing the same story rehashed, though, and it'd be yeah. boring. That's true. See, but what studio did that? I don't know. Um, I don't know studios. I think, it was, I think it was A1 Pictures. I can double check. Really? Might have been. someone else besides A1. Still my favorite, though, is Domestic Violence. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah, that thing. <laughs> I was so wishing that was actually somebody he would have fought, because <laughs> that was like the funniest thing that I saw. That and um, Mr. Justice, like both of them were just fucking amazing. <laughs> I still love when like Mr. Justice takes off the mask and he has the like huge alien face that would never fit yeah. in the mask. <laughs> well, my it my favorite like a Looney Tunes cartoon or something. Yeah. Well, one of one of my favorite things with Mr. Justice is just every time he did something, he yelled Justice something, like Justice Beam and Justice right. Tackle and all that, and it was amazing. Oh, it was so good. That he Nitro. was introduced, man. I was just like, <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, God, that, I need to watch that anime again. I really do. Especially yeah, now, that I've, now that I know what happens, I'm going to be significantly more prepared for it. <laughs> See, that's when you bring out you bring along someone who isn't prepared and just watch them freak out. <laughs> that's where that's where one of the topics we discussed like a couple weeks ago. That's how it would make the anime amazing again. Just watch it with someone who yes. hasn't seen it and like, watch their reactions. Don't don't tell them that it goes crazy or anything. Be like, oh yeah, it's a super good drama and everything. It's great. There's a little it, bit of comedy in there and everything. Yeah. And then like when shit ass. hits the fan, they're just like, what the fuck? It's like. <laughs> It's like kick ass the anime. You'll love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the no, it goes from like um kick ass to like Batman and then it goes off the rails and starts going crazy cuz when he gets like his little gadgets and everything, it's it's pretty cool. Anyone who has not seen Save My Life and like goes listening to this like shame on you. We've talked about it enough. You need to go watch it. Yeah. I mean, so. we, yeah. And that's why I do the spoiler warning every fucking beginning of the episode cuz all that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Anyway, I don't have anything else for Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Do you guys? Mm. Nope. Nope. Uh, I... Ke- uh, Roberto, are, is the next... Vo- what volume are you guys starting next? Six. 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 It starts at chapter 36. That start the one I'm thinking it does, Roberto? The uh, best one? I don't know. Mm, you guys might run into my favorite mm, goal. No. No, it's no? not that. It's not. It's, uh, we get in, you guys, we get into we get into some other business first. Ah, uh, uh, that's right. Okay. Anyways, you guys will enjoy the next volume just like you guys have enjoyed all other volumes before this one. Um. Yeah. I got nothing else. All right. I really wish it was an anime. <laughs> that's all. Hey, Gotta work on that letter, way. bro. I'm working on it, man. I'm trying to get a seal of approval from the president to make it super official. So how many things do you have that are just going to be shipped over to Japan now? So I have a letter to make them make this series an anime. I have a letter to just say to Japan. Um, and I have no, a no, third these, these are all yeah, in like, the to Japan letter. Yeah. yeah. It's all in I, the think, I think a season two of Spice and Wolf is one of them as well. Season three. Yeah, season season three. that's another one. Oh yeah, season three, that's right. Yeah. And okay, so you've got that. You've got you need to make loose from Biscuit Hammer. And there's, there's something, something else. else. Uh, we, we'll just re-listen and find out, or just never <laughs> find out, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta write that letter, man. You gotta write that to Japan letter. I will write that to Japan letter. There, oh, I think I know what part of it may have been. It's just like, just in big bold letters, why? <laughs> I think oh, it may yeah, have been something right. like that. That's what it was. That's the other one. If not, that needs to be added in there, too. <laughs> oh, that was, that was the third and final. Just be like, to Japan, first off, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and then go into the rest of it. 
<laughs> Segue into why does anime have ecchi now? Well, no, it's not why it does. We all know why it does, but it's more money, bro. how. <laughs> and anyway, uh, it's not even actually part or time for that, Clecker. It's, it's actually time to go to the other stuff we've been watching or reading. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, like, Lecker's trying to take over and fucking everything up. <laughs> Everybody's trying to take over, and, like, yeah. I, I don't even know if I'm needed anymore. You're fucking taking over, Dan, Clecker, like, everybody just, I yeah, don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to mess you up a little bit. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, I'm too good, man. You can't mess me up. Let's see. Let's see. So, um, well, Dan, what else have you been watching or reading this week? Uh, honestly, nothing. So Yeah, that's what I figured. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Clicker? Um, Red Fairy Tale, Red Kingdom. I did all my usual readings. Uh, I started reading more of Tough. Um, still a little bit interesting. Not completely sold on it yet, uh, but I'm still gonna read it. Um, uh, let's see. Spoiler warning for Fairy Tale: Natsu kills a god. That was... I don't know. Everyone expected it. <laughs> you're, you're not even going to discuss that? You just want to no. throw oh, that out there? Yeah, I just want to throw that out there. Natsu kills a guy. Okay. That's it. Because, alright, just like how I threw that out there, it, like, everyone saw it coming. Everyone knew it was going to happen. And it's not like there was a built-up to it. It's not like, oh, here we go. There's this really tough thing. We have to try and fight it. No, it was just like, bam, tough thing. Bam, dead. Well, what like, if somebody's, like, three chapters behind, then you just, like, ruin that for yeah, them? Yeah, that's why I said, huge spoiler warning, <laughs> Natsu kills a god. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. um, obviously, besides the things we watched for Switch Code Geass, I didn't watch anything else. I needed, I should have watched, um, I should have watched, um, High School DxD, but I, I, I didn't. Yeah, I forgot, too. I was busy. So... I should totally talk about it. No, you shouldn't! <laughs> hey, man. I got this little red button that just drops you from the call. <laughs> we can make this happen real quick. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've done. Yeah. What about you, Roberto? I'm assuming so, you got caught up on uh, Domestic Nakanojo. Oh, yes. Did you read uh, 46? Yes. Oh, my God. That ending. Uh, I don't think we've actually gotten to talk about this in a few weeks. Either. Yeah, we haven't. Like, dude, like, the thing that probably made me the most happy out of the recent, like, chapters has just been where she went fucking slap happy on him, man. Yeah. Like, that was amazing. You just see Rui just fucking snap and just fucking gone. Uh, I mean, he yeah. kind of he kinda needed it, honestly. Yeah, he, he definitely deserved it. It's interesting that it's it's kind of a harem, but not really. And It's, it, it, it doesn't quite go the way of, like, school days or anything, but it definitely shows much more of a realistic take on what happens in a harem like yeah shit goes wrong people get fucking crushed by it and like oh uh, like Pretty how much. how much do you actually believe what she said at the end of that where she's just like i'm just gonna like hate you from now on partially like i think she's really gonna try but deep down she's she still cares she still loves him yeah she's gonna try to win him back yeah that's that's kind of what it seems like to me and uh i don't know this this anime or this manga has been drastically different than I thought it would be. Like, it's it's almost up there with like my favorite manga artist and everything. Like, it's it's good. Yeah. Speaking of which, you you still need to start some stuff by uh, Seo Koji. It's actually my next thing because I uh, finished up Madaka Box, so I'll be starting uh, Kimi no Idomachi pretty soon. Uh, fuck. Is it that's the right order, right? I think it's Suzuka first. Suzuka, then Kimi no Iremachi, and then Fuka. Okay, I'll do some research on that. Yeah. Make sure I go in the right time, order. Yeah. What? Every time I hear Fuka, I just think of Clonad. Just every time. Oh, this this Fuka makes me much more sad than the one in Clonad. <laughs> what? Okay. But Dongo! Shut up. Shut up, Clicker. Red button. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Or you do. She's not even <laughs> the one who sings that, man. That's not yeah, like... She's not! You're right! But just, just still, she was a part up. of the big, great Dongo family. Nah, no, nah, the what, what, like this Fuka and everything. It makes me even more sad because she is legitimately my favorite character out of like anime and manga combined. Like wow. she's fucking fantastic. Does she wait? Oh, so there is an anime on it. Never mind. No, yeah. she, there's not. not. I just like her better than any yeah. anime character. 
including Shinji Ogahara, Shinobu, like all of them. I like her better what? than them. Yep. That's right. Wow. You better, you better, you better get on that then. Maybe you should start reading it, and you'll find out why, Clicker. Maybe. It's it's quite a ways, because it's, I think, like, Kimi no Idumachi is almost 300 chapters in. Well, they're, they're all, like, self-contained enough where you don't have to know anything about the other ones. It's just you'll pick up stuff from the other ones whenever you do, like, watch or read them or whatever, which I, I definitely recommend reading them, because they fucked up Kimi no Idumachi, like, the, the anime. But, um, I don't know. Mm. It's, uh... I'm kind of shocked. Like, hmm. Yeah, but you can even see on my anime list, like, it's up there, it's, it's my it's my favorite manga, it's on the top of my favorite characters right above Sinjo Gahara and Shinobu and Asha, like... Man, wow. Yeah. It's what Clecker doesn't visit often. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> I, I, I haven't been on there in a few weeks either, but mine's still significantly more up to date than his, so, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it it is. I know it is. That and mine has our, our favorite little Chunibo dancing with uh, the hula hoop pentagram. So it's great. Uh, I think our our compatibility went up, CJ. Really? Eighty one, eighty one point eight. Solid. Nice. I didn't know that. Yeah, it moved up to very high. It was like moderately high or something before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I've got, pretty much. I finished Madaka Box. I also read the Seven Deadly Sins manga. Got cut up with that. How? How is that? Really good. Really. It, it's like a fairy tale was more violent and more edgy. More edgy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You heard me. I don't know. I love that being a description for something. It's like, it's it like this is. other thing, only there's more violence and tits and ass. It's like, <laughs> yeah. That's a good description. I understand pretty, now exactly what much. you mean. <laughs> Even though I don't know fairy tale what, like, what that's like and everything, because I haven't watched like, it or read it. But yeah. I guess. Hmm. I don't know, because fairy tale lately, Roberto, has been very etchy. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. You can there. There can always be more itchy. Yeah, which kind of segues almost segues to our next topic. <laughs> well, I, I, damn it! You guys need to stop trying to segue. I haven't done my part yet. <laughs> well, I've been more than just the nest, domestic Nakano joke. We didn't Come even on. mean to do it this time. It just I know. happened. Um. Yeah. I, I don't really have much though. Just I got caught up with uh, watched the newest episode of um, My Love Story, which is fucking amazing. Is incredibly funny and it's it's a very cute yeah. romance too. I've been hearing good things about that. Yeah. It's so remember, it's very good. So remember how we were like, I wonder how they're gonna mix it up. Well, yes. they mix it up. Oh, I forgot you've been watching that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fucking new challenger. It's like, oh, what? Yep. <laughs> Where did that come from? That and uh, her little not so innocent thing and everything. I'm curious what yeah. that is. Oh, Which you'll I see. Think, I think a new episode released today. Today. Yep. Wednesdays. Yeah. Oh no. We just. We just let everyone know when we record. Oops. <laughs> that the illusion has been broken. Oh no. <laughs> Despite release on Mondays. They're probably going to oh, be listening well. to this in like three weeks from now, actually. <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you're, just, you're just letting them know more and more, Dan. Come on. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, but anyway, that that's pretty much some, the other stuff that I've been uh, watching and reading there. I don't really think I have anything else to add on. I should have watched the newest High School DxD, but I didn't. And, yeah, really not a whole lot more than that. I've been pretty busy lately. Except I did watch more Initial D the other day, because it's, it's something good to watch whenever I don't need to think. It's like, oh yeah, car drifting, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that's something I've watched a couple times before, so it's not really much to talk about there. So, but uh, So we're supposed to watch High School DxD, but you forgot about it. Right, but we're not supposed to. We usually oh, do. No, no, I know. I just, I just wanted to mention High School DxD because okay. it's an edgy show. Then forget it. Forget oh it. my god! It would have been kind of worked do... if you had not like. I, I was it. gonna do a decent transition into that. Okay. You just ruined it. But fuck it, we're we're already there now. So I think we're we're close enough where we can go ahead and go into the edgy and how it affects anime for you and like how does it make you feel. Which we already know from last week how it makes Dan feel. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Hard. <laughs> aroused. <laughs> oh, you didn't say yeah. aroused. No, you <laughs> said, said hard. Aroused. But I learned it now. I learned a new fancy the word you were supposed to use was aroused. Yeah. See, when you, but, um, when you come from a different, like, mother tongue, you kind of learn the language in a more objective mother way. Mother tongue? Dude, you lived over here with us for several years. You have no excuse. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, just to give a little more, a little more description of what we mean by this topic and everything, though, it's um, it's not just like, oh yes, the the etchy makes me quite aroused. It's not anything like that as far as like how it makes you feel. It's more how how does it affect anime that you watch? Like, was there a romance anime you thought would have been better with more or less etchy? Like how how does it fit in with the ones like High School DxD that are crazy action ones, but there's fucking tits and ass in every single fight scene? Like, it's it's more of that. Like, if if you think it's appropriate, I guess is the best way to put it. Right. So, who wants to go ahead and start off with that then? So I think we should address the elephant in the room first. In hmm. that we're all guys, and we don't necessarily dislike it, but okay. you know there are times when it it can become too much to the point where it's like. Let's ignore the story and the characters so we can have boobs. Well, for me, I'm, I'm actually a little bit different than, I guess, a lot of guys are, where I, I think it shouldn't be in most animes anyway, especially not in the action ones or anything. I mean, I get I get it. It's it's designed, it's literally called, like, fan service in certain instances yeah. where it's just to draw people in. It's like, oh, it's a cool fighting one. Oh, and there's tits and ass. Cool, I want to watch this. Like, for me, no, that's, it's, I don't know. I, so, I feel a lot of the stuff I watch would be better without it. Right. Certain ones, it's necessary because it's just part of the plot and everything like High School DxD. That is a perfect example of one that does it well because literally the entire character revolves around boobs. Like, that is his life. Right, it that's makes a show that, that totally embraces the theme. And it's not like the etchy is distracting from the actual story of the show or whatever. The etchy is pretty much yeah. part of the story of the show. Like, No, the, the, the etchy is the story. Yeah, it, it is yeah, the genre. It is. It, it's it's an etchy show with a little bit of romance and fighting tacked on. Yeah. So, so that one's very High School different. DxD is every shonen, except instead of friendship, it is etchy is his power. Etchy yes. gives me power. Pretty and much. because of that, it's done very well. Yeah, and I, I think that's actually partially the reason why I love it so much, even though it is etchy, and I, like I said, it's not something I usually go for with uh, shows and everything, but because of how it works with this, it's 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 a, pretty much, in my opinion, very much a parody of all the ones that have etchy and stuff all the time, because of, like, I don't know, just the mentality of the main character and everything, and it, it, it is pretty much like a, a, almost like a stereotypical shonen, where it uses etchy instead of the friendship, like you said, and it's it's just funny because of that. Cause it's making right. fun of the other ones all the time. No, I get it. There's there's just so much of it and so exaggerated that you can't really look at it seriously. Like you mm. need to tell yourself, like, okay, no, they're they're making fun of it to an extent at least. Like, <laughs> but that's pretty good. I mean, the, like, the fucking logo for the show with the name has yeah, several yeah. <laughs> sets of boobs in it. It's like really bad. Come yeah. on. <laughs> they like they, they like their etchy. They're just it's it's. I don't know, they, they just go way over the top to the point where it's just ridiculous and making fun of itself, and that's why I love it so much. I mean, they, they talked at length in one of the episodes about the profoundness of nipples. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> the true meaning yes. of tits. Oh, was so good. It was very good. I, but, um, like, that was the first episode, and after that, I was like, this season is gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Also, I just want to address that, like, Roberto started talking, mentioning that, like, the fact that we're all guys, and, and because of that, we would naturally like that kind of stuff more, but honestly, I find that, like, there are a lot of girls who like this kind of stuff, too. Oh, and obviously, their like, own version. Well, there are different versions, too, but, yeah. you know what, forget it. I was going to mention something, no, 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 but... Go on, go okay, on. No, I was, I was just going to say that my uh, girlfriend... She actually appreciates uh, etchy shows quite a lot. She just finds them as arousing as, as I would find them. <laughs> For oh, the most and part. And, um, no, but she's not, like, the first girl that I've seen, like, kind of say... Like, obviously, because I'm, I'm, I've gotten closer with her, like, she 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 was... She felt free to tell me those things. But there, 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 there I've seen other instances where someone would be kind of, like, be... be is scared to show it, like where a girl would kind of like be scared to show everyone that she likes that kind of stuff. But in the end, like in, deep inside, she kind of does. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course there are others. Then. Go ahead. I'm I'm curious. Uh, are, are are we allowed to mention that she's your your yandere and not just your girlfriend and all that? Sure, it's fine. Okay, she's yes. never gonna listen to this, sure. and she doesn't speak English, so whatever. <laughs> I was just making sure because I I don't want her to come kill me because of that. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I already warned Dan not to end up on the six o'clock news. 
<laughs> but just tell, since you guys mentioned that, there's something that has happened like a few instances before, but just happened right now, where like you guys were talking about something that I wasn't necessarily interested in right now. So I went to check my phone, like I do sometimes, and I haven't messaged her in kind of a long time, like a few hours. <laughs> and so I went, like I opened up uh, WhatsApp, which is why we usually use to send messages here in Brazil because it's free or whatever. And as soon as like I, I opened the chat and I started like typing. She got on and she was like, oh, you're typing. As if, like, she was <laughs> waiting for it the whole, like, last three hours or whatever. Holy shit, dude. So it's like, it's like the third time that something like this happens. So I'm like, that, holy shit. That's and the scary, anime about man. your life is going to be great, Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dan, anyway. I wish you luck. I really yeah. do. But it's yeah. cool. It's cool. It's been cool so far. Yeah, you like it, days. You'll be fine. And I started calling her, um, you know... Just, just kind of as a joke, but she likes. Yeah, it. that's she's seen the show though. Yes, she has, and More she's okay being once. called Nudo uh, in reference no. to. Yes, yes, that's not a good sign, Dan. <laughs> that's not a good sign. All right, so we need to have a replacement co-host lined up pretty soon. Then. Yeah. we're taking auditions. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're not we, officially we... taking auditions. Don't don't know how much longer Dan's gonna last. So I mean, we gotta get shots. Dan will be fine. Watch, watch her, watch her be like actually learning English, just so that way she can listen to all this now and everything too. She, she said and... she started. Um, <laughs> but... Oh god. <laughs> anyway, and do no, no, what but... the main character and Miranda Key did, and put a leash on it, and make sure she doesn't go rampant because that's what he did, and it turned out okay for him, right? Well, it's, it's so far I'm not that worried because she doesn't own any guns or any sword or something Yet. like that. Yet. Yet, exactly. <laughs> that you know of. Yeah, that I know of, that's right. But she wants you. So, yeah. anyway, let's well, go back to the nothing, topic. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with liking guns and everything. I mean, I have yeah. a few myself, you know. Yeah. I'm going to get one. It, I need to I It's need just to that in Dan's case, up. in Dan's case, it's a little, a little bad. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I just thought it was funny how like we were talking about it, and then I just joked around like, "Oh, you better not shoot me if I do something wrong or whatever." And she was like, "No, no, I'll just shoot like somebody to try to mess with you or something." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> well, at yeah. least you know she'll defend you. Anyway, I, I'm I'm Til playing the very like, bitter end. <laughs> honestly, she's just like very fun and playful, and like whenever I start like something like this, she kind of role plays along. Yes, damn, uh, we know. So that's we're that's just fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> We right. we've been in relationships too. We we know how it goes. Continue. All right. So back to the the etchy talk here. Yeah, um, the good stuff. So I mean, <laughs> you do make a good point, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, back to the etchy stuff. Mm, the good stuff. It's like <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, there are times where like they kind of do do it in like a natural kind of way that's not in your face and it still kind of works. Well, then I don't like the ones that are super stereotypical. Like, oh no, I fell on top of you. I grabbed you. Yeah, through. yeah. Ah. The, I think we've talked about that. Like, yeah. in our most hated anime cliches and stuff. Um, to me, it's particularly annoying when it's, it's a show that I'm enjoying and that I take seriously. And then there are a few scenes like that. I'm like, oh, really? Like, did you guys also have to get into that whole like, what's the expression? Bandwagon? Or okay. Um, because I remember watching Sword Art Online and really enjoying it. And then, when, like, from time to time, and it's not, like, exaggerated or anything, but from time to time, there are a few, like, weird scenes um, in that sense. And there's even, like, a, a tentacle scene at the end of the first season. Oh, every, God, I hated that. Yeah. And that, that annoyed me so that. much because I, I was enjoying the hell out of the show, and I was taking the show story seriously. And then those moments would come up, and I'll be like, oh, seriously? Like, you guys, you? Like, yeah. I mean, luckily you didn't read the light novels. They get into a lot more detail. Oh shit! Uh, a lot more detail. Yeah, about they do. about certain. Oh, things I'm sure that you happen. know about that, Clucker. I read the light novels. See, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Clucker, how does how does the IG make you feel? I think it needs <laughs> to be done right. Um, I, I think I a better mean, word is in moderation. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to go into more detail, but um, it's. Needs to not just be blatant, and it needs to be done right. Um, and when I mean done right, I mean we've already discussed most of it, actually. It can't just be blatantly out there. It can't just be, hey, 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 guess what? 
random scene, I'm now touching this girl's ass. No, like, it can't do that. There has to be either a purpose to it, or the story has to be maybe revolved around it. The exception, um, yeah, I was going to say, the exception is when the whole show revolves around yeah. it, where it just becomes, yeah. like, very funny and everything, so... Yeah, what well, what I, what I meant by the in moderation there and everything is in in accordance to what the anime is. Yeah, if it's something that is like it's a harem that's built on pretty much complete like etchy everything, then yeah, it's it's part of the show. Like, but that that kind of goes into like a little bit why um why I wanted to do this topic though is there's actually been a couple of them that um were actually could have been good harems or romances and everything. But because they focused on that so much, it ended up detracting from it enough for me where I ended up not enjoying it. I've actually had that happen on multiple occasions. And it's, I don't know, sometimes it seemed like it's just a really, I guess a, god, what the hell's the word for it? It's like a, a super easy plot device. Right. That just makes it not work out well. It's like ketchup. If you're eating something that's not that great, just throw some ketchup in. It works. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good uh, point there. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good just point. just catch up for the super bland romance. It's just like yeah, yeah just throw a bunch of it on there. Yeah, there we go. People <laughs> like it now, or at least yeah. they'll buy it. Even if they don't like it, they'll see the tips and be like, oh, I'll check that out. Yep, pretty much. That's how I see it. This is why I hate most of the stereotypes about guys because <laughs> all that shit. <sighs> I feel certain, or a lot of shows would have probably benefited without as much. Not about shows that would benefit of like having more itchy. There are some that would, yes. Because I, I just came to mind how, like you mentioned that on when we we're talking about Saber Marionette. Nothing uh, could have really saved that show. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Twin Tails. Both of those were so bad. I was actually reading the other day. It was fucking hilarious. I found uh, something on um, it was uh, the anime Reddit or the anime subreddit. And it was talking about apparently the first, um, the, the initial release of one of the episodes for Twin Tales was so bad, they redid the entire episode for, like, the DVD oh Blu-ray release. Oh, yeah, I saw that, that, actually. I that did see that. was fucking hilarious. It was bad. Oh, see, my God. I, I find funny how, like, I missed that show, but, like, so I was kind of sad for, like, missing something. On the, but then I was listening to you guys talk about it, and I, I was just like, okay, I guess I didn't miss much. This is one of the ones where I I don't know it it is definitely a parody anime definitely a parody anime but they they just didn't pull it off well and maybe more or less Echi could have helped that I don't know but like if if you want to watch really good parody of like Magical Girls and stuff Kodo was Zombie Desuka is probably my favorite parody of that because okay. it's it's just fantastic because in the powers transfer to a zombie guy and he ends up being a little fucking pink tutu and shit and like, <laughs> it's just hilarious right. it's amazing oh I'm... you guys need to watch bludgeoning angel dokudo chan no mm -hmm. idea what that is <laughs> it's pretty fantastic I'll, I'll get you to throw that up in the chat later or something all right Go ahead, Clark, gonna say, say I, I actually still need um help. i was just gonna do some awesome news that roberto has sent me and I want to extend it to all you guys because it's amazing. Is somebody news. pregnant? Okay, go ahead. No. Um, JoJo is going to be released in America. It was not already. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was well, not, it was not released I think in America. Some of the older the license. Warner Brothers. <laughs> Weird. Never heard of them doing stuff. So that's... I don't know how I feel about that. Same. Same here. This may exact. Uh, that's exactly what I said to. Like Roberto, I was like, they don't. I've never heard them doing anime before. I mean, they're they're a big enough like company that should be able to do at least a decent job of it and everything. But until they really actually prove themselves, I don't know how I feel about that. So hopefully they'll they'll do well. I hope so too. They they better get a fucking awesome voice actor for Joseph though. They better get. Tell they better do the whole like awesome like glamour scenes right, or else I'm gonna be upset. Whoa. They're not changing the actual show, it's just the yeah. talking. Well, yeah. still, the voice, like, the voice Actually, yeah. for those scenes need to be right. Like, awesome. Zeppeli, Zeppeli's yeah. probably gonna be a hard one to get a good uh, good voice actor for. Oh my god. Because yeah. they, they straight up picked, like, the perfect voice actor for that with the, the Japanese version and everything. Like, he is fucking amazing. Like, he made that character for me. Like, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about... Yeah, no, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, Zeppeli from the uh, Jonathan arc. Yep. I was thinking of the, the other Zeppeli. family. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the other Zeppeli. I wonder if they're going to make it with an Italian accent. And that was awful. 
forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I did I actually say that wrong? Did I confuse something there? No, no, no. Because no, I, I believe good. Zappoli is supposed to be Italian or something like that. He was, yeah. So he I, was. So so I'm Brazilian and I have my accent, but I was trying to mimic an Italian accent speaking English. Okay. Just for how the dub was gonna be, but that just sounded he crossed like crap, three so. different languages, and that never yeah, works. It never works. Yeah. So. I mean, technically, the arc starts off in in Britain, so I wouldn't be surprised if they pick some British people. Yeah. One thing though, I actually did see the other day that was actually kind of cool. Like, I haven't seen the uh, the anime or anything, and I'm not sure if I'm going to yet. But um, I saw some. This is something else I actually found on the same day on Reddit. Is I found the uh, thing about the Twin Tails. It was uh, it was talking about um, how some of the some of the voice actors that some of the companies get are actually really good for like what they choose them for. Like I think it was free. Um, they they were showing a scene from that. It was just like a YouTube clip and everything. And apparently, like one or two of the characters went over to somewhere. Like I think it was Australia or something. And they actually just straight up hired like actual Australians and everything to do the voice acting for it for the English. And I was listening to it, I was like. Oh my god, they actually have like native English speakers Authentic. as the voice actors. Right. And you could tell it was really bad technically because of the accent and everything when the the main characters were speaking English to them and everything. You could tell they they were definitely Japanese primarily, but then like they were talking back and forth and everything. I was like, "Holy shit, they they actually did it. They like people actually sometimes get English voice actors for this shit. Right. It's great." <laughs> and they have them, they just don't use them. Yeah, I, I I thought that was really cool whenever I saw that. Cool. Anyway, back on topic here. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to add to the uh the I guess the the philosophical discussion on Etchy here? <laughs> I think we covered most bases, but I don't know about Robert and Clucker. I mean, it's kind of like as long as it doesn't overtake the story elements, I guess I'm okay with it. Yeah, it it definitely needs to fit the anime. Yeah, like. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, if you're going to incorporate in that, you need to start. You need to think about that from the beginning how you're going to incorporate it. Because just having yeah. the generic stuff thrown in there just to have them in there and everything doesn't work. Like another another good example is probably Dusk Megan of Amnesia. Like part of the the main girl's character was just that she was like incredibly perverted and everything from the beginning. So half of the etchy scenes just fit because of how she was. That was her personality. Like like that was something that seemed like it was thought out from the beginning to me. Right. Yeah. I mean. I could sit here and list bad examples, but oh, I might, can do that all day. We might have to. We might have to start censoring the show. Uh, yeah, let's let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Clicker, you have any final things to add here? Nope. Like, actually, I, I am curious. I want to ask you a question. Um, because I know you've read uh, Nozokiana a few times. How do you think it actually worked with that manga? That manga did a good job of it because I felt like they intended from the very start for edgy to be in it um i think that sometimes like it overdid it to a certain extent uh but overall i felt like it did it pretty well uh what did you think of it i i thought it worked well with how like what the story was because the story is very much of this Geared 18 year old edgy. well it's not just that it's more like the the story is very much a guy struggling to figure out, like, he's he's dealing with the, the things that, like, some people have and some people don't, where it's, like, some of them just straight up know what they want, whether they want to be in a relationship with somebody or if they want to sleep around or something. And with him, you can see he's struggling between those two and everything. And because of that, it's it's much more understandable to have that as, like, edgy and everything is part of the oh, manga that. frequently because it, it shows some of the stuff that he's, he's dealing with and everything going back and forth and all that. And it... Yep. it, it, it it fits the story well. I, I I will agree they did overdo it a couple times, but uh, well more than a couple times. But it's <laughs> it's it's a long yeah. manga, so they they had plenty of times to mess up there. But uh, for the most part, they did a good job. It it fit well with it. Yeah. Have either the um Dan or Roberto? Have you guys either you read that yet? Yep. I just yeah, I read that. The, I just watched the OVA or whatever that they did. Yeah, Not read at that all. Uh, does it justice? I know. Yeah, it does. I read it a while ago. I think we talked. Oh, yeah, about I forgot it. about that. Yeah, how how do you think it was in that? Because I know like, that's I, one of the most like examples of a shit ton of ecchi in there. It was definitely designed to be like an ecchi manga. I think at first I was a little unprepared. I was just, 
And then That's once a good I real- put it, yeah. Yeah, and then once I realized that, like this is gonna be the tone for the show for the manga, I'm like, <laughs> all right, I I can live with it. Let's let's keep going. Yeah. You you still need to read it, Dan. You'll enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure he will. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the people here, he probably uh, actually I don't know. I'm no, sure it'll he, make you he... plenty aroused, Dad. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Oh, you don't you don't like talking about your so arousal? You're doing that last episode. Already, <laughs> CJ. <laughs> Feel free uh, to end this whenever you want. <laughs> but but Dan, we we want to talk more about your your arousal and all that. <laughs> Alright, I'm putting a stop to that one. <laughs> yeah, you got too far, CJ. Oh, yeah, so this is pseudo random. Thanks everybody for coming. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess we pretty much exhausted our stuff there. I just felt like poking a little more fun at Dan there. <laughs> of course. But um, all right. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up here then. Um, Alrighty. So next week, what we're going to be talking about is uh, we're going to be doing episodes thirteen through twenty-five of Code Geass, uh, the first season. Then we're also going to be talking about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume Six, which I don't know what the chapters are off the top of my head, but you can go look it up if you want to follow along. And uh, some other random topic that we decide five minutes before we start recording again. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So, um, let's go around and tell everybody, or get everybody to tell you where you can find them at and everything. Let's go ahead and start off with Roberto. Yep, you can uh, find me at RJR2992. All right, and Clicker? You can find me at Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S, or you can find me on my Twitter, O-Clicker, O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R. All right, and Dan, go ahead and do yourself and the podcast sure. as well. I'm on Twitter at Lima Daniel M. The podcast is on Twitter at pseudo underscore pod. Our blog is pseudorandompodcast.wordpress.com. You can find us on iTunes or on YouTube by just searching pseudorandom. And we're also on my animal list. I think it's called pseudorandom podcast in there. Yeah, just pseudorandom. Oh, just pseudorandom. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. All right. And, um,. Yeah, you can find me pretty much everywhere as Boom Coffee, like Twitter and all that other stuff. So my enemy list and everything. So, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll continue our discussion about Codius with me hating on it as much as possible to make Dan sad again next week. So, oh, yeah, you, you weren't tune in for that. hating that much. You were just kind of like breaking it down on the things that you liked and you didn't. So I was actually quite happy about that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Like. Anyway, um, yeah. Hope you guys tune in next week and everything. Thanks. Bye. See you later. Bye. Tentacles. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> damn it! <laughs> 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 ah, damn it! <laughs>